A very good day to you and welcome to this week's edition of our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Aham and these are the stories and made talking points for us in the week that just ended. On Monday, we brought you the report that the president of Nigeria, Bola Tinubu, came out to reject any notion of a new scramble for Africa, stressing that the continent should never again endure the plundering and exploitation of its resources by imperialists. On the same day, we confirmed that social media networks such as Facebook and Instagram were restored online in Ethiopia after being blocked for the past five months. Still on Monday, we informed you that Donald Trump, a former U.S. president, came out to state that he anticipates being indicted on charges related to the 6th of January attack on the U.S. Capitol. Meanwhile, such an indictment is believed to escalate his legal challenges as he embarks on another White House bid. On Tuesday, we reported that the anticipation surrounding Russian President Vladimir Putin's attendance at the upcoming BRICS BRICS Nations Summit in South Africa was quashed as the country's presidency came out to reveal that he will not be present. This decision was made to dispel any concerns about the likelihood of his arrest in Africa. Still on the same day, we brought you the report that the federal government of Nigeria came out to confirm the first case of anthrax in the country after revealing that the disease was detected in a farm somewhere in Niger State. We also reported that the proposed 8,000 Naira conditional cash transfer initiative, which aims at providing relief to the most vulnerable households amidst the fuel subsidy removal in Nigeria, was on Tuesday reversed for immediate review following President Bola Tinubu's directive. And on Wednesday, we reported that there was palpable anger amongst Nigerians following the hike in the pump price of premium motor spirit PMS, popularly known as Petro, by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and other oil marketers across the country. The cost of petrol jumped from about 537 naira per liter to somewhere between 617 naira and 630 naira per liter. On the same day, we reported that the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, came out to claim that no one, no matter how highly placed, has the right to destroy the food security of any nation and the world in general. The world now has an opportunity to show Russia that it does not tolerate blackmail. He called on the world to resist Putin, whom he said was using food as a weapon of blackmail. On Thursday, we reported that Senator Godfrey Lakbabio, who is the president of the Nigerian Senate, announced that the federal government is committed to evaluating a salary increase for workers to mitigate the impact of fuel subsidy removal. On the same day, we reported that New York City announced a decision to pay more than $13 million as compensation to address the complaints of thousands of individuals who can show proof that they were arrested or subjected to physical harm by NYPD officers during the 2020 racial justice protests. 
Also on Thursday, we reported that members of the House of Representatives ad hoc committee on allegations of manipulation called on the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMP, to halt any action against Mesoma Ijikeme, the student accused of manipulation of her unified tertiary matriculation examination, UTME result. On Friday, we reported that the president of the Cameroonian Football Association, Samuel Eto, was accused of match fixing in Cameroon. It was revealed that the former Barcelona, Inter Milan, and Chelsea striker allegedly promised to promote a second division club known as Victoria United by manipulating matches in their favor. On the same day, we reported that the Nigerian House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on International Boundary Disputes between Nigeria and Cameroon revealed that it might consider a fresh application to appeal the International Court of Justice judgment that ceded Bakasi to Cameroon in the coming months. The Danari and Biajua communities and about 7,000 to 10,000 hectares of land in the Boki area of Cross River State risk being lost to Cameroon, according to a motion by the lawmakers. Finally, on Saturday, we reported that the Labour Party LP came out to offer a robust response to the recent comment credited to President Bola Tinubu, where he reportedly warned the Presidential Election Petition Court, PEPC, that sacking him from office for not attaining 25% votes in the FCT could lead to anarchy. The opposition party told the president that anarchy only reigns where the rule of law is trampled upon. We also reported that French football giants Paris Saint-Germain confirmed that they dropped Kylian Mbappe from their preseason trip to Japan over their decision to put him up on the transfer market. And finally, we brought you the report that the Christian Association of Nigeria can came down hard on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu over his administration's policies, which they claimed were inflicting hardship on Nigerians. They called for immediate measures that would alleviate the suffering of the people. Now, that's been it on our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Aham. Thank you so much for watching.